Hello, Book Two, and welcome back to Book Trek 2023. This is the summer of Trek. This is uh, an event created by Vin at Revenant Reads a couple of years ago to celebrate Star Trek fiction in all its incredible variety. There's a huge amount of it. It's only just recently come to a complete halt, or an almost complete halt. Once upon a time, it was flooding the bookstores, and it floods the used bookstores. If you go to the right one, you'll find hundreds of these things. Uh, and we, the summer of Trek is about to end. Summer is about to end. I know that for most of the U.S., it doesn't feel that way. Most of the U.S. is on its, its solid month of triple-digit temperatures Fahrenheit. A solid month without any relief at all. But nevertheless, summer, at least on the calendar, is coming to an end, and so is Book Trek. So I'm, I'm making up for lost time here by do, reading something new every night. The thing I read last night was very short, over like a flash. I don't think I ever read it. I don't think that it originally came out as a printed book. I think these were ebooks first. I don't really know the, the provenance of the, uh, uh, the Starfleet Corps of Engineers. That's what, that's what this series is about. This one is The Belly of the Beast by Dean Wesley Smith, but there were a lot of these things, and a lot of spin-offs. This was an, a strangely popular series. It's all about the Corps of Engineers. So once again, we are dealing with an unconventional storytelling sort of superstructure here. Starships can come and go. Guest stars can come and go. It's the Corps of Engineers who are everywhere. They can be on starships. They can be on planets. They can be back on Earth at Starfleet. They are the center of the story, and it's going to be right on the borderline of the technology that's so advanced it becomes magic, because Star Trek deals a lot with that. Like, for instance, in this novel. The novel opens with John Luke Picard's Enterprise fighting and defeating an alien vessel that they then have to understand. Uh, and they need the Starfleet, the Starfleet Corps of Engineers to do that, to understand that. The, the Corps of Engineers got its origin, its first mention, in... Uh, Star Trek, in Star Trek II, where Dr. Carol Marcus mentions that it took the Starfleet Corps of Engineers months to phase her out the tunnels of her, of her Genesis asteroid. Uh, what, do, what we did in there, we did in a day. Uh, and it goes on. We, we've known a lot, of course, a staple of Starfleet, of Star Trek, in almost any incarnation, is that we get to know the chief engineer on board the vessel. That started with the original show with Scotty, who you see on this cover as an old man. Uh, but it's, that's gone right down to the present. Uh, the, I don't, nobody remembers the name of the chief engineer in Star Trek Discovery because the chief engineer was a bungling amateur next to Michael Burnham, but nobody remembers the name of anybody on Star Trek Discovery except Michael Burnham. And you're also not supposed to remember the names of anybody but Michael Burnham. And in Star Trek Discovery, if you do remember the name of any character other than Michael Burnham, you are a racist. Uh, but in the rest of Star Trek, no, including in Star Trek Strange New Worlds, where he just got a very intriguing character as the new chief engineer on board the ship. This is, is set in, I believe, the heyday of Star Trek on TV. And obviously after the Next Generation episode in which Scotty from Kirk's time is revived <laughs> and is now alive in the 24th century. There you have Geordi LaForge. But you also have Scotty who in one episode of The Next Generation is found alive in a perpetually regenerating transporter buffer. Fittingly enough, Scotty duct-taped and improvised technology into a means for his own immortality. Of course, the basis of that gimmick was... The reason for that gimmick was because Jimmy Doohan was free to be on the show, and that would be a huge rating boost. But the basis of that gimmick is, of course, never touched on again. Because... Scotty did this on the fly with equipment that was not designed for it. If this can be done, though, then that means there is no death anymore in, in Starfleet. Anywhere. Because anyone, you can just put yourself in a transporter buffer. And you want, you, want to, you want to jump 300 years? Go right ahead. I've never understood that anyway, why there would ever be death or infirmity in Star Trek. Even when I was watching the show originally, I was thinking, well, okay, you say you've got a transporter pattern for everybody that comes through the transporter. And you say in many original episodes that you can take away parts from that pattern. If a character comes through the transporter with uh, a weapon, for instance, you can materialize them without it. Or, even more fine control, fine control you can materialize it depowered. I always thought when I was watching, well, okay, doesn't that mean you can, you can get rid of tumors? Maybe you don't have tumors in the 23rd century. Doesn't that mean you can get rid of old cells with new ones? Can't you change the transporter pattern? If you can manipulate it that finely, can't you take someone's transporter pattern at age 60 and rework the pattern 
so that when they rematerialize on the transporter pad, they're 30? I don't know. I've never seen it dealt with in a Star Trek novel, but one reason, one way or another, Scotty is part of this. He's the head of Star Corps of Engineers. So he makes little guest appearances in these books. He's, the action doesn't usually center on him. I've only read two of these things. There are like 60 of them. And this is the first one. And uh, it introduces us to Captain Gold, who is a friend of Jean-Luc Picard. He has uh, a first officer, uh, first officer Sonia Gomez, all of these characters have had little bit pieces, little moments in Star Trek The Next Generation. This thing is full of Easter eggs, and I mean full of them. Good Lord. I'm sure that I didn't catch them all. I think in order to catch most of them, you would have to be a diehard Next Generation fan. And for the longest time, I wasn't. That only changed because of Book Trek. So I probably missed a lot of names that are dropped in here. And this, it goes by really quick. There's not much to it. I thought it was entertaining in a way. It's an hour's read. Uh, it shows a different side of things. You don't have a heroic starship captain. You don't have, you know, a, a MacGuffin-laden ending. All the MacGuffins are part of the... Our heroes work with MacGuffins all day long. So it, the, the whole pace of the, the arc of the narrative felt very different. Not in a bad way. In a good way. I, I rather enjoyed it. In fact, I know the book track is winding down here. We still have some days left. I might do another Corps of Engineers novel tonight. And to test the series, to see whether or not it becomes a kind of pocket universe on its own, I might go to something in the double digits, like pick just at random a Starfleet Corps of Engineers novel from the 30s, from number 30s in the series, and see if it makes any sense to me at all. I might do that just to get the lay of the land, because I don't think I'm ever going to read every Star Trek Corps of Engineers book, but I rather like this. I thought it was it was kind of fun. Could have done with a lot more Scotty, but that's because he's from my Star Trek. As it is, I got... I, I mean, Sonia Gomez is a really good character. She's, in the, the limited amount that she's sketched in in this book, she's sketched in well. So, that's my my uh, my captain's lock for today. That's my, my report, is that Starfleet Corps of Engineers did not disappoint. I thought it was going to be doubly disappointed. I thought it was going to be both wonky because of the engineering stuff and also a little bit maybe left-handed exercise because I think it didn't start out as a book. I don't think it had to go through the vetting process that a print and paper book has to do at a mainstream publisher. I don't think it had to do that. So, so I was kind of, maybe, maybe that made me lower the bar. Maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed this under other circumstances, but I did. So uh, that's it for my book track report for today. We'll see what I add on to the pile tonight. I think there'll be another Corps of Engineers book. Just as, I'm curious to know what another one would read like. Not the next one. But way down the line, see, you know, are they accessible to, uh, to anybody who's not in love with this series? We'll find out. So I'll wrap this up for now, and I'll see you then. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.